Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? What we're going to talk about right now is the fact that not long ago, at the height of fear over the pandemic, the U.S. underwent a change that many people argued would never ever happen here. For years, I have heard people say that authoritarian, you know, controls in America are tinfoil hat conspiracy theories and doom mongering, fear mongering, right? All the prepping and all the talk of the community organizing and all the, you know, the gear and the training, it's for nothing. And then the agenda hit like a freight train. Our constitutional rights were no longer set in stone mere guidelines that the government officials could bend or break in the name of public safety no longer had to be passed through a series of checks and balances. Mandates could be implemented as if they were laws without public oversight and enforced unilaterally. There was talk of punishments for people who refused the arm ticket. They wanted passports. They wanted prison time for those that spoke publicly against it all. They wanted people's jobs taken away. They wanted their children taken away. And there were even plans to build detention centers to segregate and lock up ticket deniers. It boggles the mind. It really does. But this was a serious debate within the US and it was all triggered in the span of a year. Nearly half of the country was willing to abandon the Bill of Rights over something with a survival rate of 99.8%. And the conspiracy theorists, we were right all along. Our freedoms rest on a razor's edge and preparing to survive and fight for those freedoms is perfectly rational. But luckily, the agenda failed. The mandates were ultimately blocked by red states and in many rural areas, they were rarely enforced at all. The passport attempt was stopped cold by the, the Supreme Court. But I have long believed that the Supreme Court made this decision exactly because of the level of public resistance. They knew if they pressed the issue, something else would be on the table. Authoritarianism, it collapsed because conservatives and independents were not on board and they could not be shamed into compliance either. But what happens when there is a crisis that does scare conservatives? What happens when the political right perceives a true threat? Does freedom then become unattainable? It's not a hard fast rule, but generally speaking, conservatives are most disturbed by the threat of an invasion. But then again, who would not be? Ask any conservative, yourself included, if they were worried about Miss 19 or worried about the crisis on the southern border uh, during the pandemic. And the vast majority of them would say that the border, without hesitation, scared them the most. And, you know, conservatives, we fear cultural infiltration, co-option. They fear the steady and deliberate whittling away of the American heritage and by extension, their freedoms by imposters. And they fear the certain blitzerig of US organized extremism should the borders remain open. Now let's go back, 2001, okay? The conservative movement was a much different animal than it is today. This was pre-Ron Paul, pre-libertarian influence. Certain individuals ruled the roost and had far-reaching power over public perception, making the push for dismissal of constitutional rights unprecedented. The Patriot Act was widespread and the thirst for war was palpable. I've seen conservatives stray from the Bill of Rights in the past in the name of fighting against publish, po possible invasion. 
I remember this vividly. Today, the elements in play, they're not the same as they were in 2001. Anyone who argues otherwise was likely a child during the 9-11 era or has a skewed understanding of the changes that have actually taken place among conservatives since those days. The Ron Paul movement changed a lot for the better, but primarily within the conservative constituency. Regular people changed their thinking on what it means to trade liberty for security. The GOP, it's a pipe dream to think that we could ever change the GOP. At least the pandemic proved that we have allies at the state and local levels. The real problem is those still influencing the path of the Republican Party. These are people who happily ally Democrats behind the scenes. They have close ties to establishment elites. The royalty rests in the hands of the globalists. And if the globalists want war, then they want war and they will do anything to get it, including create it. That's how it works. This time, I think they're going to get what they want. Martial law. In the United States, it would only ever work if a majority of conservatives actually support it. This is a fact. Without our backing, martial law will fail just as the mandates failed. Keep in mind, 46 and his globalist friends have used every possible tactic to make this law an inevitability. Economic instability, stagflation, they've created a spike in violent crime and looting, mass migration and dragging down the state welfare systems and is creating a trend of cultural dilution. Open borders have allowed any number of possible foreign hostiles into the U.S. and we know this. In the midst of the war, the government's desire to control information and public discourse will be at an apex. However, as we have seen during certain events, they have not proven effective at accomplishing this as long as the internet is in place. It does not matter what kind of algorithms stifle the truth, the truth still finds a way. And this means that the establishment will have to pursue extreme measures that could only be achieved within a martial law env environment. And I see this situation going one of two ways if the current geopolitical trend continues. The first one, a multi-front war breaks out in the Middle East, including, including nations like Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Yemen. Israel uses its arsenal to destroy the resources of enemy nations, leading to the possible involvement of China and Russia, and thus, and thus the U.S. Attacks become regular occurrence in the U.S., not just initiated by extremist uh, infiltrators, but also by leftists who attach themselves to these causes. A draft is initiated, which conservative support in the hopes that it will dissolve the attacks. Draft resistance becomes the norm, like it did back then in the, in, you know, with the, 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 the 60s with the Vietnam War, pushing conservatives to support an even stricter enforcement. And finally, martial law is announced. But the soldiers used on American soil to protect us from attacks will be primarily foreign nationals who join the military and put the boot down on dissenters which they will gladly do. At this stage, the Constitution will essentially die. Second one, the war expands. 46 commits U.S. Naval forces to fight along with ground troops, primarily special forces. He then calls for full deployment of U.S. ground forces into the region, but in this scenario, the majority of conservatives, they don't support this. He tries to implement the draft in order to force the momentum. Conservatives refuse to comply on this one issue. 
conservatives and leftists actually agree, even if it's for completely different reasons. The country is then hit with an endless series of attacks. Each one presented a reason why the public must back the war. Each attack is cheered by the leftist activists as an act of decolonization. Now, conservatives see this ploy for what it is, and they still refuse to support it, taking the America first position. Why fight overseas when it's America that's under this stress? 46 still attempts the martial law. He offers automatic citizenship to certain people if they serve in the military and uses some of these troops as an occupation presence at home. Leftists don't want to fight in the Middle East, but they do like to see certain groups get citizenship and power. They defend the measure. They figure if the migrants will fill in the ranks of the military, maybe they won't be drafted. Conservatives rebel. America enters the, either balkanization or civil war or both. Patriots are accused of helping the enemies of the United States and are also labeled. From this point on, anything is possible. I believe that the Israeli trigger may be bigger than Miss 19 in terms of the potential global disaster and global tyranny that could unfold. If it continues to escalate and turns into a multi-regional conflict, the chances of the fight coming back to America are extremely high. Not just in terms of extremism, no, but also in terms of civil unrest and war on our doorsteps. If we support the war, martial law is a certainty. If we don't support it, Martial law will be attempted, but at least there will be scenarios where it could possibly fail. I would argue that the only thing that will save America at this stage is the growth of the American First movement. When we talk about America First, this includes not just American security, but also American freedoms. There is no reason why we can't have both. If conservatives and independents, heck, all of them, get lured into WW3, game over. Game over. Is this a scary thought? Heck yeah, it is. But you know what? I want you to do your own research. And I want you to form your own opinions. And let's have this conversation because this could very well go into play very well could all right guys i'm out of here okay i will see you in the next one you stay safe you stay positive you keep prepping and as always fearless ciao